Hi, and welcome to Physics Fundamentals. I'm your host, Angie, and today we're going to be talking about astrophotography. I'd like to introduce to you Scott McNeil. He is the director at Frosty Drew Observatory and Science Center. He is a staff astronomer at Brown University's Ladd Observatory, and he is an adjunct astronomy professor at Bryant University. He loves to introduce the general public to the wonders of the cosmos. Scott? Thank you, Angela. So what is astrophotography to me? Astrophotography is the art of photographing the night sky with an objective of capturing astronomical objects. It is a STEAM activity that touches on all the aspects of the acronym, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. It is a modern version of the wonder that a view of the cosmos has given the generations of explorers. Why do I engage in astrophotography? The reasons are to connect with the cosmos in a manner that has not been possible until recently due to the increases in photographic technology. I do it to inspire the general public, specifically younger generations, to embrace that wonder of the cosmos and reach for the sky. And I do it to increase the amount of readily available astronomical data and information that is available in the public domain. But it takes me away from the numbers of astronomy and puts me back out under the sky looking at the stars. So starting out with astrophotography comes down to starting out with the basics. And all you really need is a simple tripod and camera. A tripod like this costs about $25 and you can use any camera to attach to it, including a DSLR you may have laying around or even an old point and shoot camera. Finding a wide field lens to get a wide view of the night sky will allow you a lot of options for photographing basic objects. With a setup like this, you'll photograph constellations, you'll be able to photograph images of the Milky Way, and you'll be able to see planets as they move across the sky. And using this type of device will not only start teaching you about the night sky, but it'll also teach you a lot about how cameras work and how things work in a night setting. You're also going to want to learn about the night sky and how to start finding objects in the night sky. Using your smartphone, you can download free apps that will help you navigate the night sky. iPhone users can use an app called Sky Guide. Android users can use an app called Sky Safari, and desktop or laptop users can use an app called Stellarium. All of these applications will be very useful in planning your night or being out underneath the sky and helping, them, helping you locate what is in the sky. Your observation location will certainly matter as well. In the city, less stars are visible due to the amount of light pollution that exists. But outside of the city and the suburbs, the sky will become much more visible due to less light pollution being present. Regardless of your location, you can still learn about the night sky, even from a light polluted location. Now, learning how to find the North Star, which is also Polaris, is a crucial lesson to be learned. Now, the North Star can be found by first identifying the constellation Ursa Major, which is the Big Dipper. And the Big Dipper is very easy to find because it looks like a spoon in the sky. The handle will have three stars in it, and then the cup will be composed of four stars in a rectangle. When you're looking at the Dipper, the right two stars in the cup will point right up to the North Star. After capturing photos of the night sky using a camera and a tripod, you may want to start experimenting with a telescope. And any basic telescope will work, as you may find a telescope sitting around the house or maybe your friend's house or even find an old one at a yard sale. Now using a smartphone with a smartphone adapter, this device will cost you anywhere from $25 to $80 depending on who makes it. You can attach your smartphone to your telescope. And this will allow you to start taking pictures of the planets, of the moon, and of objects in the sky with higher magnification. And this is very simple, and this is an excellent way to get started with higher magnification astrophotography in the introduction of a telescope device.
This here is an example of a basic astrophotography setup. This is not something you would start out with. This is something you want to graduate to. But with this setup, you could accomplish a lot in learning about astrophotography and completing astrophotography. We have a telescope attached to a mount with a camera attached to the back of the telescope. The telescope itself is a refracting telescope. It's a modern version of what Galileo would have used to discover the moons of Jupiter. The mount itself is called a German equatorial mount, which means that the axis of rotation points to the North Star. Over the course of the night, as Earth spins on its axis, the sky is going to appear to move, and this telescope mount will track the motion of the sky slowly to make sure that everything stays where it needs to be. Now, our camera is an astronomy camera. It is black and white, the sensor, so it only captures images in black and white. And then this round device here is called an electronic filter wheel, or EFW. Inside here, we have red, green, and blue filters, which will allow us to capture color images using a black and white sensor. To capture everything, we need to facilitate all of these functions to a computer device. These devices are single board computers. This com device here is a little bit more powerful than this one. It costs about $100, and you can use it to guide your mount and run your astrophotography session when you're out in the field. This device is called a Raspberry Pi. This is very inexpensive. It's about $40 on Amazon, and it's highly customizable. You can use this device to control your mount and also to take, capture images of the night sky. Though if single board computer devices are not what you're looking to use, you can use a laptop as well. Just make sure your laptop handles the cold well, works well in the dark, and is not vulnerable to do. So here we have a telescope on a much larger mount. This mount is a German equatorial mount, so it functions in the same manner as before, where the rotation axis of the telescope points to the North Star. But this mount is heavier, and it is much larger, so this means we can accommodate much larger equipment on this mount, and we can perform much longer exposures because the tracking precision in this mount is much higher. The telescope itself is a larger telescope, and it is a more modern telescope. It is called a Ritchie Cretion Telescope, which is the same design that the Hubble Space Telescope uses, though this is on a much smaller scale. In this case, we have a mirror in the back, which is called the primary mirror. We have a secondary mirror up here in the center, and light will come into the telescope, reflect off the primary mirror back to the top, and then reflect again from the secondary mirror down a hole in the primary mirror and out the back where our astronomy camera will be able to collect that light. Just like the other astronomy camera, this is a black and white sensor with a filter wheel. But this sensor is much smaller than the camera we showed before, and this is very popular with planetary imaging. It is black and white, so we have to have red, green, and blue filters in the filter wheel which will allow us to capture color images using a black and white sensor. Making progress and moving forward with astrophotography comes down to how often you set up and photograph the night sky, the better you'll become at doing it. You'll learn the issues and nuances of being out at night with equipment, like using a red light instead of a white light. How the sky appears to move and what this does to your photos. Also how Earth's atmosphere may interfere with your objective in your photo. What magnifications will work best for your equipment to give you the best result possible. As you progress, you will start to identify where your failure points are and how you can perform upgrades to address these failures. This is an important aspect of astrophotography. I call it graduating to new equipment. When you graduate to new equipment, you are purchasing new equipment that addresses a specific problem instead of just buying something cool and flashy. Don't fall into the trap of spending a lot of money on your gear, but instead use creative thinking to solve your problems and spend the time researching what devices are out there that will adequately upgrade your equipment without breaking the bank. 
Find online forums to post your work so others can see what you are achieving. This will bring the affirmation that you are doing something right or possibly doing something wrong. And it will also boost your confidence once people start following you for your work. And don't be afraid to start over. If you are having trouble figuring out a path forward and are becoming frustrated with the process you are trying to achieve or possibly your equipment, this is a good indicator that maybe you are not on the right track. Stepping back, starting over with a new solution will often solve your frustrations and result in a better path forward. At the end of the day, before you start your night out under the sky, it's important that you love what you're doing and that you're enjoying your night under the stars. Fall in love with the cosmos, fall in love with astronomy, and just lay out underneath the sky while you're capturing the cosmos and really get lost in the fabulous expanse of space and all that the cosmos has to offer us. Now I'd like to introduce to you two students who are interested in astrophotography. Unity is a ninth grader and a junior astronomer volunteer at Frosty Drew Observatory. Her hobbies include playing the guitar, arts, math, but also discovering new celestial objects. Unity? Hi, I'm Unity and I'm an astrophotographer. When I was about two years old, my parents got me my first camera, which I don't really have a memory of. But around the age of four was the first time I used the camera for astrophotography. I photographed the moon using my AstroScan telescope and a point and shoot camera. In the photo, I labeled some of the craters I knew and submitted it to the nature swap at Roger Williams Zoo. Those are some of my earliest memories, but as I grew older, I volunteered at Frosty Deer Observatory, mostly because my mom and my dad, they worked there, they volunteered there, so I kind of just followed along. But for the first few years, I didn't work that much on telescopes and astrophotography, but as I grew older, my dad started teaching me and I grew an interest in astrophotography. And after a while, I started using some of the telescopes and cameras and just looking at the night sky. Now I have learned how to use those telescopes and take photos and edit the photos. One that I've recently done is the bubble nebula in the constellation Cassiopeia. My dad walked me through the steps still, but I really enjoy the process and most of all, the final product. So even if you have just the smallest interest in this, I say go for it. The sky is the limit. It's a lot of fun and I say everyone should just give it a shot. Thanks Unity. Now I'd like to introduce to you a student named Griffin. He's an 11th grader who's currently doing research with a professor here at Brown. His interests include exoplanets, distant galaxies, and photography. Griffin? Hi, I'm Griffin. I'm a junior in high school. I've been interested in photography for many years, but I first got involved in astrophotography during the start of COVID lockdowns in early 2020. After seeing the space station pass overhead and attempting to photograph a full moon, my interest for space grew and my focus shifted from close subjects in our solar system to large and distant deep space objects like nebulae and galaxies. Starting with just my phone, then later progressing to a DSLR camera, I continued to go out every chance I could to practice. Astrophotography is difficult and there's so much to learn, and to this day, I'm still improving. Currently, I do most of my work from here in Providence, where I'll set up on clear nights. I've enjoyed combining my love for space and physics with the art of photography to create images that not only look good, but are also packed with science. More recently, I've started to dive more into astrophysics, studying and observing distant objects from the early stages of our universe planets orbiting nearby stars, and more. Astronomy has connected me to an amazing community of people all over the world who are also passionate about science. I hope to continue my work in this field, whether that's in the hobby of astrophotography or in astrophysics. If you're at all interested, give it a try, and I'm sure there are plenty of people like me who would be happy to help you out. Thanks, Griffin. If you have any questions, please email us at physicsfundamentals at gmail.com. We're ending now with some images from the Brown community and the local community at large. Enjoy.